Today, Speedify has built an app and an SDK that brings Wi-Fi and cellular together into a single gapless service. So how exactly are they doing that? My guest today is entrepreneur and CEO of Speedify, Alex Gizis. Join us for more right after this short message. All right, everybody, welcome back. My name is Klaus Hetting, and this is the interview program that brings you all the great stories and at least all the great people from right across the global Wi-Fi industry. So today we'll be digging into a topic that is becoming hot again, especially with the advent of unlimited mobile data plans. The topic, of course, is how to bring Wi-Fi and cellular into a single gapless service so that you can get the best of both worlds for your connectivity. Speedify is one of the companies doing exactly this. I've been following them uh, actually, I think, since they were <laughs> created more or less. And I'm delighted that my good friend Alex uh, Gizis, a CEO of Speedify, has agreed to come on the program today and tell us more about how they do this and exactly what effect it has. So we'll get to Alex in just a moment before we do that. A uh, couple of quick announcements. First announcement. We have two great new Wi-Fi Now events in the pipeline for this fall. We'll be going to beautiful The Hague in the Netherlands for our Europe event, and that's at the end of October. And for the first time, we're taking Wi-Fi Now to Asia, specifically to Bangkok, and that'll be at the end of November. So if you're interested in a role in any of our two upcoming events, don't delay getting in touch with me now at uh, my email address, klaus at wifinowevents.com. And of course, for all the details about the events and registrations for tickets and all of that, go to wifinowevents.com. And while you're there, make sure you also check out our new Wi-Fi news section. We've been working really, really hard at getting you all the latest Wi-Fi news and information. Uh, and there's a lot of good stuff in there, breaking news analysis and all of that. So make sure you check that out and subscribe to our weekly news service uh, there's really good stuff in there. So, second announcement before I forget, we also have the Wi-Fi Now Awards coming up this fall with six categories, including best Wi-Fi startup, uh, best service provider, best Wi-Fi in-home product, best innovation, et cetera, et cetera. So if you want to get recognized for all the great work that you're doing, uh, make sure you check out our website at, uh, our website for that is wi events.com slash awards. Uh, and you can enter the awards right there. We look forward to hearing from you. Of course, we want lots of nominees for these awards. We'll be shortlist and we'll announce the winners at our Europe show in The Hague in October. So make sure you check that out. Now, my guest today is Alex Gizes, CEO of Speedify. Alex, welcome to the program. Great to see you again. Oh, thank you for having me. It's great to be here. Alex, uh, I've been following you guys for a long time. I'm so excited that you're on because we always totally agree with each other, by the way. So I always feel so good after an interview with Alex. So, but anyway, let's, uh, let's get into the thick of it. Uh, again, I, I'm sure we'll agree at the end anyway. So first of all, give us the uh, one minute introduction to Speedify. Sure. The reason we're here is because cell phones today do a terrible job of juggling Wi-Fi and LTE. Right. Every time you switch from one to the other, all your voice over IP calls are hung up, your music stops streaming, any downloads you had going stop. Uh, if you join a dead hotspot or a black hole hotspot, as people have been calling it lately, uh, you're just off the internet completely until you turn off your Wi-Fi, which is terrible. And there's no way for the phone to know that it's a bad Wi-Fi hotspot until you've after, you have already joined it and the damage is already done. So what we've created is Speedify, which creates a layer of software, sort of a virtual network, that lets you bond all the connections together. And it's cost aware, so it knows that if what you're doing fits on the Wi-Fi, it'll just use the Wi-Fi. But if anything goes wrong with the Wi-Fi, it can almost instantly move your live sockets, your streaming phone calls, you know, your video interviews with Wi-Fi now, shift them onto the cellular to, to keep you online for the interview. And, uh, uh -huh. And, and right now, it's both an app that you can actually download, right? And it's also an SDK. And we're going to discuss that. That's correct, right? That's correct. Uh, obviously, we think to get to hundreds of millions of users where we want to be, the only way that's going to happen is if we you know, partner with carriers and, and they push it out as part of their platform. So we have an SDK for that. On the other hand, we're an agile company. 
Mm-hmm. We're not going to wait for the network operators to get back to us on how their tests are to find out how well it's working. So we launched it as a consumer VPN. Mm-hmm. Maybe right. the consumers, maybe the consumers are going to vote with your their feet and just go directly to Speedify and do it right outside of the cases. And some of them are already doing that, right? Yeah. So we, we have 150,000 active users right now, using our servers in 35 different locations around the world. And so we're we're proving this thing scales, this thing works, it adds it adds value, mm-hmm. and it's uh, going pretty well. So let's get yeah no it sounds like it. So let's get just a little bit of the backstory because I always find this fascinating. I think this probably gets back back to so how did you get the idea for the speedify app in the first place so we make a pro- our first product was software called connectify hotspot yeah. which is a hotspot right for your pc so we wrote all of our own routing software for windows in order to let you share your internet connections with all the other devices and the, the further we got into writing our own nats and our own routing uh, the more we thought, why, why can't we use multiple internet connections at the same time? You know, and at the time you're dealing with, you know, 802.11b, 802.11g was the fast thing. DSL was a pretty good internet connection. None of it was good enough, right? So we wanted to put them all together for extra speed. And that was really 2011 we had that idea. We've actually been working on this for quite a while. Mm-hmm. Uh, as time goes on, it's been less about speed and more about reliability. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll so let- Right. So let's pick up on that a little bit. So, so from the user's point of view, the consumer's point of view, it's really about the quality of the experience. And essentially, I guess if you if you've got Wi-Fi in your house or anywhere, and you've got your LTE subscription, generally those should play well together. But can you um, can you describe from the user's point of view what they get with the app as opposed to what they would get without the app, sort of in day to day terms? Sure. Um, couple things. One is just the reliability of your internet. I mean, you can have great Wi-Fi at home and great LTE, but every time you walk out your front door, a lot of people call this the driveway problem, right? In your driveway and your Wi-Fi is down to one bar and your phone is still stuck on it, and suddenly you're off the internet. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, Google Maps doesn't work, right? You're sitting in your car and you can't get Google Maps to work until you pull out into the street and lose Wi-Fi entirely. Now you're driving and playing with your phone. It's terrible. Mm-hmm. Um, so with us, with it running in the back, with Speedify running in the background, it's constantly measuring how well the Wi-Fi is working. And the instant it sees it's not working, it'll shift everything over on TLT. So there's no more dead spots. Mm-hmm. So there's also, actually, when I first wrote this uh, question about dollar savings, I, I thought it made a lot of sense to me. But now with the so-called unlimited plans, I don't know if the savings aspect, because originally there was a savings yeah, aspect. About carriers. Because hey. carriers don't, the, the network operators don't think of LTE as free, right? I mean, it's their network, but the way they account for things, uh, it's not wrong, right? They're paying for all the spectrum, they're paying for all these towers. Mm-hmm. They would much rather you use Wi-Fi than LTE, and they've been pressured into unlimited plans, but they're not delighted by it. So anything they can do, especially the MBNOs, who are paying per gigabyte to whichever network operator they're really using, they really want to get you onto the Wi-Fi. So we did a whole series of tests for one of them. One of them asked, and, and so we, we walked around the city of Philadelphia. We, we set our phones to join uh, every Wi-Fi network, all the ones run by our local cable company. And what we discovered was a full 25% of the packets that got sent on the cable company's Wi-Fi were dropped. And it's not that the Wi-Fi hotspots are that terrible. It's that we were on the sidewalk. Hmm. So they're beating Wi-Fi out of people's houses, out of the businesses, and you take a couple steps and it switches from one to the other. You're always at the edge of range. You join a good one, you take three more steps. And it was just a terrible experience. I mean, losing 25% of the packets, that's not working internet. That's why some people refuse to join these networks. They refuse to join open hotspots. They even turn off their Wi-Fi. Mm-hmm. But once you're running Speedify, you join the Wi-Fi, we test the network, and if it's terrible, we don't use it. And if it's you use it, and if you take a few more steps and it becomes terrible, we stop using it. So we found we were able to shift 20 to 25% of our LTE usage onto the Wi-Fi while still having more than 99% of our packets get through. I mean, it was just good for everyone, right? We had better internet, 
we used less LTE, every, everyone was happier. Mm -hmm. But would you agree? Yeah, yeah I, I can totally see that. But would you agree with me that the, the issue before, I mean, a lot of things have changed with the advent of unlimited plans, right? So now the problem of uh, offloading, if you like, it resides with the carriers, right? Because they're going to yeah. have to oh, do that. Okay. Right? <laughs> and it used to be that people wanted to save money because they had this limited package and they, they did the offloading themselves. So would you agree with that? Yeah, I absolutely would. In, in fact, in one of the features that was key a year ago and isn't that important, we have all these alerts, right? So if you use more than 200 megabytes of LTE in a day, we give you an alert because it turned out that most people who blow through all their data do so because they don't know how much this new app, not some other new app is using. And so us acting as a traffic cop and warning you that this new app is using a lot of your data, that was a key feature. A lot of people back then were using us just for that feature. Yeah. Nobody cares about that anymore. Nobody cares yeah. about that anymore. So anyway, uh, but the carriers obviously should care, but obviously, especially the mobile carriers, because as you said, LTE for them is not free. They build capacity, right, to, to, and deliver that. Um, but just before I forget, uh, I need to ask you about the security issue, because as I remember it, and correct me if I'm wrong, there's a VPN built into this, right? Is that correct? Yes. Uh, by default, we, enc we encrypt everything. Um, strong security, we're using DTLS, which is uh, like TLS, you know, SSL, but over UDP, so we have excellent performance. Mm -hmm. And yeah, we, we encrypt everything. It's actually, if you use the SDK, you can control. So a, a network operator could decide to not encrypt over cellular, but encrypt over Wi-Fi. But uh, our, our default is that we just encrypt everything. And that's one of the features. I mean, when you start jumping on open Wi-Fi hotspots, mm -hmm. Right now, it's very hard to know who's really running that hotspot. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't have to worry about it. Everything's encrypted with us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, it's, it, it, it's a seriously important thing. And, and obviously, when it's occluded, so much of the better, obviously. So uh, that's a great feature. Now, um, let's talk a little bit about the SDK. So you talked a little bit about some of the uh, service providers that might be interested in this. And it's a fairly new... Uh, product that you launched, the SDK, because Speedify has been around, the app has been around for a while. So it, where do you think the demand is coming from and who are you hearing from? Is it especially MBNOs or is it everybody? So there are two different kinds. So the MBNOs have been, you know, the majority, the, the, the biggest group of people showing up desperately want this. We, we, we have some, you know, real operators who, who are looking at it, but the MBNOs are clearly the most excited to build to build this functionality into their own apps, right? They'll run the servers, and it'll be you know they'll combine usually some Wi-Fi finder with our our you know VPN and bonding functionality in order to build a new app. And that's a lot of what I'm excited about. What we've been surprised about is a bunch of enterprises have shown up, uh -huh. uh, and they need less integration. There, there. So we have an, another API we've launched where they can call us and tell us to connect to their private server to you know, ensure that we're connected and things like that. And the enterprises that are really interested turn out to be companies that are doing stuff with streaming media, right? So we have a major media company that sends out their reporters to interview people for the radio, and it's just a voice over IP app on the iPhone these days. And it's so embarrassing if it goes out, right? If they either, the Wi-Fi goes out, the cellular goes out. So we've got a version for them that streams over both at once the Wi-Fi and the cellular and just delivers whichever copy comes through first. Uh -huh. Another enterprise customer, and this sort of surprised us, has turned out to be these Twitch gamers. They're professional gamers now. And they play video games and they're streaming their games out to a live audience and they're just an enterprise customer. This is a, a mission critical app to make sure their video games stay working. Mm -hmm. uh, we've been working with, with you know, some of these guys to uh, make sure things really work up to their high standards. So here, this is really the reliability uh, aspect of your solution that, that's playing in, right? And 
And goodness knows, I mean, the, yeah, we've all had reliability problems on our yeah. connections, right? So anything that can improve that and substantially, obviously, is a yeah. fact. It's interesting. See, but the other thing is that sometimes you invent stuff and you don't know how eventually people are going to use it in some other way that you first imagined, right? So Yeah, we, we've totally been seeing that, right? At first, we thought it was about the speed. At first, it was about the speed boost. And then for a while, it was about saving money. And now it's about the reliability. But it's, it's this core engine we, we've been working on yeah. for years. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Multiple connections. So, uh, so what are the next steps for for you guys in getting to market or expanding your business? I think you touched on some of it already, but what, what are you looking forward to over the next six months? In addition to becoming a gazillionaire, so because we have some trials with some network operators that are uh, going forward that we are very excited about. Uh, and on our development side, the big thing we're working on here that you'll start seeing pieces of in, in the next month and, and by the end of the year, for the whole thing, is per application and per protocol rules. So that you can treat voice over IP calls different than the software updates mm -hmm. for your operating systems. You say the voice over IP is critical. Send that on both connections. I never want a call hung up on again. But, you know, the background update dates, you can say this is the least important thing and it's okay to push that off. So a lot more smarts about per application. We've already got a lot of smarts about per connection, right? Understanding mm -hmm. that more expensive than Wi-Fi. Mm -hmm. Now we're adding the, the sense about different applications. Mm -hmm. Well, Alex, I commend you for doing all this. And I, I think it's a fantastic uh, product and, and, and great technology. And I, I really, really uh, admire you guys for having done this. And I'm rooting for you because I'm counting on you guys for a big breakthrough so that I can tell all my friends, yes, I know those guys. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm really happy to have you on the show and come back again and tell us more when you have more news to share. Really happy to see you, Alex. I will. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Thanks very much. <laughs> All right, all right, everybody, that's it for uh, this week's show. Thanks to Alex Gizes from uh, Speedify for joining us on our next program. I will interview another great guest from the world of Wi-Fi. I don't know exactly who's going to be yet, but uh, please check back with us. So that's it for now, and uh, tune in again next time, and thank you for watching. Wi-Fi Now is a production of RCR TV News. To suggest a show topic or to learn more about Wi-Fi Now events, you can reach Klaus Heading at klaus at headingconsulting.com. To find out more about Wi-Fi Now and all things wireless, visit rcrwireless.com.